This is Mark Lex, Extension Wheat Scientist at The Ohio State University. The purpose of this video is to explain how to use the herbicide classification chart to determine herbicide site of action diversity uh, in your herbicide programs. The idea is that you could take a look at the herbicides you're using over two to four years and determine how many different sites of action you're using both within and over years and see if you're in danger of overusing certain sites of action uh, which might lead to herbicide resistance. The chart I'm referring to is the Take Action Herbicide Classification Chart that was developed by weed scientists across the North Central Region and we've been distributing this uh, via some funding that we have from USB uh, along with weed scientists in other states. So it's been fairly popular. It does a couple things pretty well. The left side of the chart lists single active ingredient products uh, and shows what the mode of action is and the site of action. So we have a previous video that explains what herbicide mode of action and site of action is. So um, you can go back and watch that if you need to. Um, so in the blue circle here it shows the herbicide mode of action and what we're looking at is a an example of a group of herbicides for which there's one site of action under the mode of action. So the mode of action is lipid synthesis inhibitors and the site of action is the group one uh, site of action which is the ACCA's inhibitors and you can see we have three different chemical families and a number of active ingredients within each chemical family so for example if you knew you were using select max um, you could find that on the chart sometimes it's helpful to know the com active ingredient before you start this process the chart doesn't list every available product for example for clethodin which is the active ingredient in select max we have select and section and a number of other products as well. But if you had Select Max, you could see that it's clethodim, shows you the chemical family, and then you come over to the left and you see it's group uh, group one site of action. Uh, and then we have sites of action or categories for which there's multiple sites of action within a, within a mode of action. So the mode of action here is photosynthesis inhibition, and then we have three different sites that can be affected within that process groups, and we call these uh, sites five, six, and seven. Um, so you can see, for example, here if you're using uh, atrazine, you could see, uh, you could look up atrazine, come over to the left and see it's a group 5 uh, site of action. If you don't use a chart for anything that I'm going to talk about here today, you can still use it as kind of a nice reference to uh, determine what's in the herbicide premixes that you're using. So the right side of the chart lists most available herbicide premixes and then shows what the, what the trade name of the premix is, what the active ingredients are that are in that uh, premix and what the comparable trade names are if there are comparable trade names. In some cases it's an active ingredient for which it, it's not really sold by itself. So example for you can for example here you can see Lexar EZ has mesotrione, esmetolachlor, and atrazine in it. And then you can see the comparable trade names which are Callisto, Dual 2, Magnum, and Atrex. And then you can come over and see what the sites of action are for that. So in order to do the exercise I'm going through here you, you need to be able to use both sides of the chart really. I'll just walk through some different uh, herbicide use patterns over a year of beans and a year of corn and kind of show you how you would determine your site of action and do the count to determine how many different sites of action you're using both within a year and over years. So I start off with a relatively simple program here. Um, I'm going to keep be consistent. My year one is going to be no-till soybeans and the burn down is going to be uh, Roundup or glyphosate and, and 2,4-D. In this case, we have a post-emergence application of, of uh, glyphosate as a follow-up. So it's not a very diverse program. And then our con corn is conventional, so it's it's been tilled. So no need for burn-down herbicides. So in this case, we've picked Bicep, which is an atrazine premix, a mix of atrazine and esmetolachlor, and still coming back with glyphosate post. So it's a relatively uh, simple program and one that probably did get us into some resistance uh, issues in some situations. So if you go back to the chart, you can look up glyphosate and see that it's a group 9 uh, site of action. You can come down and find 2,4-D um, and go over to the left and see that it's group 4. And then you can use the right side of the chart and look up Bicep 2 Magnum and see that it has a metallochlor and atrazine in it if you didn't already know that. And go across and see that it's metallochlor is group 15 and atrazine is group 5. So we come back those here to the chart and uh, fill in uh, those numbers. You can see so over the soybeans we have 949. And for the for the corn, the biceps five and fifteen, and then the glyphosate uh, is nine again. So one of the key things here is that you're trying to get get at how many different sites of action you're using both within a year and over a year. So anytime within a year you're using the same site of action, again you can still only count it once, and then over years you can still only count it once also. So in this case we're using glyphosate tw twice in the beans, and then also using it once in the corn. So when we come back to do our calculation. We can only count two sites of action in the beans, 2,4-D and glyphosate. We can come down and count three different in the in the corn, uh, 
uh, the 5, the 15, and the 9. So we get a total of 3 in the corn year. But when we do our two-year total, we still only have 4 uh, because we have glyphosate used both years, so it falls out again. So we have a total of 4 herbicide sites of action, not a real diverse program. If we modify this by throwing in a common soybean premix, in this case we'll fix, pick Valor XLT, which is a mix of Flumioxys and Valor and Clamiron or Classic, and that's group 14 and group 2 sites of action. So we come back and list that on the chart. So we install a category in the beans for our pre-emergent herbicides, which is Valor XLT, and you can see we've added the 2 and the 14. Um, the, the corn year is still unchanged, and we can still only count the glyphosate once in a year and then once over the two years. So when we come back and do our calculation, uh, we have four sites of action in the beans, 9, 4, 2, and 14, and then three sites of action in the corn, 5, 15, and 9, but we're using 9 or glyphosate both years, so we still have a total of only 6 uh, over the two years. Looking at some other modifications you can make, we could say, for example, add metribuzin back into the pre-emergence bean program with a Valor XLT to help possibly for mare's tail control. Uh, so you come back and come down and find metribuzin on the chart, look to the left, and see that it's actually in the same site of action as atrazine, group 5. So when we come back and modify our, our chart in the exercise, we add a, uh, a line for the trichor or metribuzin um, in the soybeans. So that does take us to a total of 5 uh, sites of action in the beans, the 2,4-D glyphosate, uh, Clamiron, Flumioxazin, and Metribuzin are 9, 4, 2, 14, and 5. And we still have 3 in the corn, uh, but in this case we're using glyphosate both years, so that falls out, uh, and we're using a group 5 site of action both years, Metribuzin in the beans and Atrazine in the corn, so that falls out. We can only count it once, so instead of having a total of 8, we have a total of 6 uh, still because of that overlap. You can make some other changes to, to introduce some diversity, and one of the places to do that is the post-emergence program in corn. So in this case, we have glyphosate being used both post, post both in the corn and beans, and you can decide, okay, well, I don't want to use it, but glyphosate in the corn, I have a lot of other good options. One of those might be impact. So in this case, if we look up impact on the chart, the common name is topramazone. We come over to the left and see it's a group 27 uh, site of action. So we swap that in for the glyphosate uh, post in the corn, so we're back to our original bean program of glyphosate 240 burn down, then Valor XLT and glyphosate post. So we have a total of 4, 9, 4, 2, and 14 in the beans. And we have a total of 3 in the corn. But in this case, we have a total of 7 for the two years because we're not using glyphosate both years. We've introduced a new site of action, group 27, uh, for the impact. Another way to introduce that diversity is to, uh, for example, keep glyphosate posts in the corn, but maybe add some dicamba to it. You could add this various ways uh, via status or clarity. I'll pick clarity for the sake of example here. So we look up clarity on the chart. Um, it's dicamba. We come across and see that it's a group four uh, site of action. So we've introduced some diversity in our post corn. This is a little bit of an interesting example because 240 and dicamba actually don't really um, affect plants exactly the same way, but they're both listed as group 4 uh, on the chart. So you can see in the bean year here we have 9, 4, 2, and 14 are a total of 4. And then we have 5, 15, 9, and 4 in the corn for a total of 4. We have to count the glyphosate only once. Um, so that drops us down to 7. And then in this case, in theory, we can only count the group 4 once. So we have it both in corn and beans uh, for the 240 and clarity. So we still have a total of 6. The argument would be, again, that 240 and dicamba don't affect plants necessarily the same way, but they are grouped the same way on the chart. So for the sake of consistency, we count, we count the overlap. Uh, another example here might be to say, okay, we don't really need post-emergent herbicides in corn. We have a diverse enough premix, so we'll pick Corvus plus Atrazine. So you look up Atrazine on the chart um, in the purple there and see that it's a group 5. We can look up Corvus and see that it's Thiancarbazone, which is a group 2, and then Isoxaflutol or Balance Flex, which is a group 27. Uh, so we come back and we, we take a look at that. So we still have four sites of action in the beans, and we have a total of three in the corn. In this case, we have an overlap of group two. And this is again a little bit of an interesting example. Um, both thiancarbazone and clarimuron are group two uh, sites of action. The hitch here is that thiancarbazone is primarily a grass herbicide, and clarimuron or classics primarily a broadleaf herbicide. So in theory, you really do have uh, probably um, you know a total of seven uh, sites of action over the two years. 
Um, but if you do follow our example and count the ALS inhibitor or the group 2 only once, you'd have a total of 6. So it's a relatively straightforward process with a little bit of a hitch here uh, now and then, but it's still kind of a neat exercise to go through to take a look at the diversity that you have in your herbicide site of action and how changing uh, the herbicides you use in certain applications within the system can introduce diversity. For more information on this, you can always check our website where we have a lot of neat videos of uh, herbicide mode of action and site of action. We have previous PowerPoints that kind of give you the background to get you to this point. And the Weed Control Guide for Ohio and Indiana also does have a limited amount of site of action information in it. And the charts that we have in there on effectiveness do list herbicide sites of action uh, for the various herbicides.